Welcome friends, it's Kaylee Bird, and today we are gonna talk about copying versus stealing versus being inspired. And I know sometimes the line between those three can get a little bit murky, but don't you worry, we're gonna deal through all that stuff together and you're not gonna have any questions when I'm done. So make sure you go ahead and pop that subscribe button and ding the bell so you're always here for the best art biz advice and fine art techniques, and let's go ahead and get this started. Okay, first we're gonna talk copying. Now, copying may sound bad, but it's actually not. When you're doing it properly and going through the right channels and going about it the right way, copying is not bad at all. There are a few things that you can do to copy, like you can do master copies, which uh, are basically learning technique, and you are copying the work of an artist greater than yourself to kind of teach yourself how they did certain techniques. There is absolutely nothing wrong with this whatsoever. Um, basically, as long as you are upfront and you are never trying to pass it off as your own. That is the difference between copying and stealing. We'll get to stealing in a minute, but copying means that you are attributing it to, your, to the original artist, you're doing it as practice, and you are not making money off of it. Okay, that's a big one. There are certain people out there that do um, like master copy, you know, original master copies, whatever. I'm not gonna get into that because I'm not sure exactly how the legality of all that is. I know that, that is legal, but for you and me, all we need to worry about is if you are trying to do something exactly like another artist, then you attribute them because you're copying it and you're saying, hey, I'm practicing and look at this and it's an attribution. And that's totally cool. No problems with that anywhere. You make sure you always want to tag or credit or whatever the original artist. Um, but as long as you're not trying to pass it off as your own or trying to lie about it or anything, then there's no problem. Okay, now let's chat stealing. It is not cool, okay? So stealing is very similar to copying, except for you are not crediting the original, you are trying to pass it off as your own, and you're usually gaining in some way, financially or reputation-wise or something like that. There's some sort of personal gain. So that's it's similar to copying in that you're using somebody else's work, except for you're doing like all of the wrong things with it, okay? So I hate to break it to you, I know people do not like to hear this, but simply going online and typing in like pretty girl with red hair, finding a bunch of photographs of pretty girl with red hair, and then painting or drawing those pretty girls with red hair, that is stealing, okay? That is stealing. If you are using somebody else's photograph, somebody else's source, and you are painting or drawing it in a realistic way, semi-realistic way, and you're not crediting them, you're not getting permission, you're you're passing it off as your own and you're possibly, you know, selling it, selling stickers, selling, selling prints, whatever, then you are stealing. And I'm sorry, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that's not okay. It is not okay. Um, the thing is, is that the internet, Google, all this can seem like this crazy, you know, entire other world and you can just pluck all this photos and information and all kinds of stuff out of this insane atmosphere and then it's just there at your fingertips in high resolution and on your screen and be able to you know use this reference and drop them and all this and it seems like this magical thing but guess what there is a human being a photographer who has put some sort of effort into every single image online all of them a hundred percent of them okay so basically what you're doing is you're taking somebody else's work because it is work to take a photograph of any kind now, of course if it's a professional one they have to do you know they've had years of training in the right equipment and the models and the lighting and the setting and they had to drive there and they had to set up the thing and then they had to edit it but even if it's just somebody's you know iphone snap real quick like they got the composition they got it clear or got whatever but they made it interesting enough that you would want to copy it it's good enough that you would want to copy it right so it's not total crap and that took time and that took work Right? And it's not appropriate to steal other artists' work or other people's work in any way and pass it off as your own. And one of the unfortunate things about making sure that you are not a thief and trying to respect other artists and their creations is that you might see a photograph online, do all the research, find the photographer, write up this really nice proposal letter and ask them, hey, may I use your photo? And they might say no. And that's unfortunate, but it happens. It happens. Um, there was a series I did a few years ago, and I was using all other people's photos. It was 12 
paintings and I probably asked like 15 different people. And so three of them had said no, or I didn't get a response. And then the other 12 said yes. And what that means is that it's not always just as easy as like, oh, I'll just credit them in the caption. No problem. I can use this as long as I credit them because no, they might not want you to. And I'm sorry, it's unfortunate, but it happens and that's okay. You can move right along, you know? I'll have some solutions for you at the end of this video to find plenty of great inspiration, okay? Just stick around. Okay, so I feel like I should interject with a quick story time. Um, so there's this artist that I've been following for a while and she's not like one of my favorites, but she is very good, very skilled, you know, good at what she does. She does really nice, very realistic pencil drawings. I mean, she is, you know, she, she knows what she's doing, right? She's good. Um, she's got a large following, well over 100,000. Uh, Instagram followers and she sells her work and sells prints and t-shirts with her work on and stuff like so she's she's doing just fine for herself and the other day I um, noticed that she had done this post and in the bottom of like the description it said um, image reference from Pinterest I think like I can't remember like that was like I image from Pinterest I think I, I'm not sure or something like that like that was the actual quote at the bottom and it's just like dude Pinterest is not like a person you're not like crediting like a human or like even a specific source really not that that would matter because you don't have like permission but that's not that's like not enough it's like okay granted maybe you told your followers on Instagram for this post that you got it from Pinterest but that doesn't matter because pin Pinterest is not a place where you can go get work and just automatically have permission. You know, she didn't get permission from the photographer or the model or like the source that it was from anything. And it's like, and and I guess I guess what struck me, okay, is for this particular artist is the fact that she is really famous and all of her um, drawings, they're they're good. They're like these compelling shots of beautiful people, and they kind of all look sort of like fashion model-ish. And if you kind of realize and you're like, oh, these are probably just all images from like fashion shoots that she had nothing to do with that she just took. So I see this post and like, I'm not trying to like, whatever, troll anybody or anything, but you know, it's kind of like, hello, like that's, it's not okay to steal. So I a comment and um, I wish I would have screenshotted it because she deleted it so I don't I don't have the exact thing anymore but I wrote it was something like uh, another beautiful drawing I'm just curious when you say you get your references from Pinterest if you ever try to find the photographer or if you're worried about copyright issues like question mark you know like I, I'm, I'm just wondering because you have you know you use such lovely references or something like that like not trying to like troll or be rude, but definitely asking like a direct question about like, hey, what about copyright issues with these images that you always talk about using? And she just deleted it. She didn't respond, she just deleted it within just a couple hours too. So I was like, okay, well there's my answer. But what struck me is that a couple of years ago, I've been following this artist for a while, and a couple of years ago, she had done a post with another drawing and I happened to see in the comments that someone commented like, oh, I'm the photographer of this original photo. And she just wrote back, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know that. <laughs> like that was it. And that was just like in the comments. And I guess maybe it had been like hearted a bunch or something, so it kind of popped up at the top, so that's how I even saw it. But like she didn't then go back and edit the post and include her name or say would you like to be credited or is it okay that I did this or she didn't like change her practices in the future to make sure that she's like getting permission or whatever so it's just it just strikes me like I think a lot I think the majority of of artists once they make it to a certain level get source their own images in a responsible way either themselves or in a responsible way but I, I, there are some that don't and that just unabashedly take from other artists and profit from it. And it's just kind of like, well, dang, okay. I guess even if you're asked pointedly directly, if this is happening, you're just gonna like blow it off and... So anyways, don't, don't be like that. It's not cool, it's not okay. And just put yourself in that photographer's position. Because photographers, everybody's got a digital camera, right? So everybody's a photographer now. So it's hard, hard, hard. You think it's hard to make it as a regular artist? It is hard, hard, hard to make it as a photographer. Just as much, if not more so. So, you know, let's give them, let's give them their art and we can make our own art, okay?
Okay, and last but not least, of course, is being inspired. And when you're inspired, that means you've taken lots of ideas and concepts and thoughts from many different people and many different sources, okay? That's when you don't micro copy one thing, but maybe you like how the leaves were done in this painting and you like how the clouds were done in this painting and you like how the mountains were done in this painting and you like how the atmosphere was done in this painting. And so you sort of combine all those concepts. You can do that and then you've made a new thing. You know, I mean, you don't want to copy it like stroke for stroke, but you get what I'm saying. Like you can do yours in that same style. In that same style, in that same style, in that same style. Put them all together and boom, you've created a new thing. So the difference between stealing, copying, and being inspired is that being inspired is just like life. You know, we get inspired from all kinds of different things. I don't think anybody follows like one single person, you know, for all of their fashion needs and one single person for all of their food needs. You know, like we all get like a, an idea of like, okay, this one's got some good ideas. This one's got some good ideas. This one's got some good Right, you pick and choose who has the kind of the best ideas that you see around and you try to build your best life. Well, it's the same thing with art. You are gonna look around and you're gonna pick and choose some of the best concepts from everyone and you're gonna build your best art. So being inspired is great. Honestly, it's so much better than copying because if you're copying or stealing, then you're kind of limited by what somebody else has done. But when you're being inspired, you're like, mm, only the best of the best for my art, right? Hey, so I hate to be the bearer of bad news once again, but unfortunately, as I'm sitting here editing this video, I realize that it has gotten a bit too long. So I'm actually going to have to wait and give you all of the good copyright free sources next week. Please, please, please don't hate me. Don't get mad. The only reason why I'm having to split this up into two weeks is because I've just got so much darn good information for you that it was going to make this video like 20 minutes long, which is like, yikes. Um, so just tune in next week. I'm super duper sorry. I mean, don't hate me because I'm ethical. Okay. i just want to make sure that you get the most amazing copyright free sources I have got five sources for you. One of them has a paid option, but basically five free options for you to get really amazing copyright free um, photos. And they are coming out next week. I'm so sorry. Don't hate me because I'm ethical. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up so more folks will see it. And while you're at it, make sure you pop that subscribe button and ding the bell so you're back next week so you know all the ways to find the best copyright free images for your painting and drawing needs.